Hi. Today's subject video lesson is the first one in a series of three for diabetes education. So what I'd like to do is introduce you to the prevalence of diabetes in our society. As of 2011, the American Diabetes Association fact sheet for diabetes said that in the United States, our national medical expenditure related to diabetes and diabetes complications alone was over $245 billion. For direct medical costs, which means going to the doctor, paying for medications, $176 billion. This was in one year. There's also $69 billion in lost productivity. That means a patient going into the hospital, having a foot amputated because they can't work, or just not feeling well. As of 2011, diabetes was considered the seventh leading cause of death. However, you have to realize the first three leading causes of death in our country right now includes cardiovascular disease, which is closely related to diabetes, as is cancer. Over 26 million Americans have diabetes. That's 9.5% of our population. That's one in 10 people. As of 2011, the ADA said that 79 million Americans, and as of 2014, they just bumped it up to 86 million Americans, have prediabetes. That's one in three people over the age of 20. And prediabetes, as you know, is an A1C of 5.7 or higher, a fasting sugar of 100 or higher, or a postprandial or after meal sugar of 140 or higher. And unfortunately, when you get into the category, the age category of 65 years or older, 50% of people have diabetes. That's half of your elderly population. If you are diagnosed with type 2 diabetes based on the ADA criteria, that is an A1C of 6.5 or higher, on more than one blood test, what you will need to do at that point, because you've now joined the diabetes club, you must have dilated eye exams at least once a year. An ophthalmologist or an optometrist can perform this test, and they must dilate your pupil so they can look behind your eye and look for any possible bleeding in the fine little blood vessels in your retina. The second thing that you must do in the diabetes club is have a yearly foot exam. Your feet are very vulnerable because of neuropathy and because of possibly decreased blood flow. So neurological problems and cardiovascular problems can cause you to have a wound on your foot that you may never know you have. One time I walked into an examining room to see a patient and he had his foot up. And I walked in the room, shut the door behind me, and said, oh my goodness, how long has that wound been on your toe? It was on the bottom of his toe. He didn't even know it was there. He turned his foot over. It was a huge wound on the bottom of his toe, completely excoriated and bleeding. And he had no idea it was there. The third thing you'll need to do in the diabetes club is yearly blood tests for a comprehensive or a basic metabolic panel, which will be looking at your blood sugar, your electrolytes, your kidney function, and your liver function. You'll also need to do your lipids. And that will be looking at your total cholesterol, your LDL cholesterol, your HDL cholesterol, and your triglycerides every year. The fourth thing you're going to need to do in the Diabetes Club is a yearly spot urine for microalbumin. Many doctors fail to do this. But because I'm a certified diabetes educator, I know that I can pick up kidney disease in you years before any other practitioner will find it in the blood work. And the fifth thing that you'll need to do on a yearly basis is check your blood pressure, your weight, and your BMI to make sure that it does not increase. Who should be tested for prediabetes or type 2 diabetes? Anybody who has a BMI or a body mass index greater than 25. Now, if you don't know what your body mass index is, you need to see your doctor and have it tested. Now, certain ethnic groups will be considered obese and overweight at much lower BMIs. 
In fact, some as low as 23. So if you're from Southeast Asia, India, or China, you will be considered to be overweight at a much lower BMI. Also, anybody who has a sedentary lifestyle should be tested for prediabetes. If you have a first degree relative with diabetes, if you're a woman who has a, uh, a history of having gestational diabetes or giving birth to a baby greater than nine pounds, these are all warning signs. If you have hypertension, which is considered a blood pressure greater than or equal to 140 over 90. This is very concerning. Also, if you have low HDLs, which are your high-density lipoproteins, or the good cholesterol, and high triglycerides. Your triglycerides breaching 150, that's concerning. And your HDLs less than 40 for a man or less than 50 for a woman, that's concerning. If you're a woman who has PCOS, which, which is polycystic ovary syndrome, many women do know they have this, especially if they see their gynecologist. They will be told they have PCOS. And if you don't know, if you're overweight, please see your gynecologist or your doctor and find out if you have it. Another person who should be tested for prediabetes, anybody who has an A1C greater than 5.7. An imp impaired glucose tolerance, which is after meal sugar of two hours, greater than 140. Or a fasting sugar, which means you haven't eaten anything for many hours, and your sugar is between 100 and 125. This is all prediabetes. And the last group that should be tested for prediabetes or diabetes is anyone who's overweight, especially if you breach the, the obesity level, or if you have acanthos nigricans. This usually is seen only in people with darker skins. So it could be an Asian person, Indian, Middle Eastern, or people of African ethnicity. And you'll see a little bit of a darker, velvety skin in the creases of your body, such as around the neck, under the arms, or in the groin area. These are all warning signs for insulin resistance and diabetes. So diabetes cannot be cured because once you're diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, the American Diabetes Association says that you probably only have 50% of your insulin producing cells remaining. Those are your beta cells that live in your pancreas and work all day long to make insulin. They're like a little insulin factory. And we don't want to make those little guys work any harder than they absolutely have to because they will slowly continue to decline in their ability to make insulin the more hard you make them work. Now they will either decline once you become diabetic slowly or rapidly. That is your choice. And that will be determined by your future lifestyle choices. So type 2 diabetes will progress. It will always be lurking in the shadows. Therefore, lifestyle changes are really the best way to keep them at bay. So if you're diagnosed with prediabetes, please, at all costs, try to avoid progressing on to type 2 diabetes so that these permanent physiologic changes in your body will not occur. Lifestyle modifications to avoid the progression from prediabetes to diabetes or to manage your type 2 diabetes can be learned from the other video lessons available on this website. Watch them often. Take notes. By modifying your lifestyle to a more healthier way of living has been studied and proven over and over again to be far better than any medication known for diabetes. In fact, lifestyle changes, eating healthier, losing weight, and exercising is equal to taking two to three medications to control your sugar. And several medications will be necessary to manage your type 2 diabetes as the years go by. So please tune in to other video lessons to continue your education. This is Christine Olivier, your Paleo Practitioner.